Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Iridium Jazz Club. It's part of the Keystone Corner Club Nights here at the Iridium Jazz Club here in New York City. Three-time Grammy-nominated pianist and composer Gerald Clayton. Tonight is blessing the band stage with very special guest, jazz vocalist Sasha Vasandani. He has a lot to celebrate. One, he has a brand new CD on the Concord Records imprint called Life Form. And this album is really different. One, he stepped outside of the trio setting and involved vocals as well as poetry as well as horns. Something that's a very different stretch for Gerald. Tonight we're going to sit down and talk about this brand new CD. We're going to talk about the special guest that brought a different element to this project, ranging from poet Carl Hancock Rux to Sasha Vasandani and Gretchen Parlato. Also, we're going to sit down and talk about his collaboration with Terry Lynn Carrington. As you might recall here on the Pace Report, I interviewed Terry Lynn Carrington in regards to the Duke Ellington album that she remade called Money Jungle. In fact, it featured Gerald as well as Christian McBride on bass. We also talked about the other collaboration called Next Collective, which is also on Concord Records, which features the next generation of great jazz greats, ranging from Gerald to Ben Williams, many, many other artists as well. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Mr. Gerald Clayton live with his trio featuring special guest Sasha Vasandani. I dream of a life that's pure and true. Job only I can do. One gal beside me. This Life Form CD is a very, very special project. In fact, you went outside of the box with the trio, and now you've added some horns, some vocal, as well as added a little open poetry on this. Yeah, this was uh, an exciting project for me to get to sort of feature some of my favorite musicians and favorite people. Um, feel really lucky to be in a, a city like New York where 
uh, so many great musicians are like r lumped in the same 10 block radius or you know over the entire city so you just have access to all these really killing cats we get together all the time and workshop ideas um, so for this record I kind of wanted to reflect some of those experiences that I've been having over the past years uh, learning from these guys but yeah they're they're all uh, some of my great friends and, and favorite musicians these compositions I understand you were working on these for about three years and putting this project together you going into the musicianship you've added horns to this what was different about writing outside of the traditional trio that you've been doing the last two projects I mean it's a lot more demanding just uh, having to really sort of see the big picture of things I think with trio uh, there's more room for sort of an abstract uh, approach towards um, roles as it were within the music so um, you know you can sort of say well this is the melody I have so far and I'm gonna sort of play off of this or whatever in this section I want us to kinda of go for this thing or we'll just vibe it out however loose you want to be um, but when you have you know a, a stage with eight people on it uh, it you kinda of have to have some things organized beforehand um, unless you know that's that's what you want that that approach but for this I really sort of was was trying to challenge myself to um, have sort of a goal a, a musical vision and see it through um, and with the help of Ben Wendell, uh, one of my favorite musicians again, and really um, just killed the producer role. He, he really was so helpful in this entire project. We sat down and sort of took each tune and sort of mapped out what we were going for. Um, and then I just, you know, put pen to paper and got to work. You know, you have a very interesting poet and writer who I've profiled on the Pace Report, Carl Hancock Rux, who's just tremendous. How did this collaboration come about? Because Carl brings the spirit of the old school poets of the Harlem Renaissance, but he brings the hip hop and new school flavor of our generation. Mm, yeah, Carl is uh, absolutely amazing. I actually met him on a gig, a radio gig that we both sort of got put on together. Um, and the concept was, I think the, the theme was bebop and sort of how it uh, applies to the modern uh, situation or whatever. So. Uh, we were asked to just jam, just come up with something together, and he was reading some poetry over some music that I was just kind of coming up with based on a song I'd written before. Um, and I, I noticed then that he has a real musical ear. It's like he, he's, um, he's like a lot of the musicians that, that I admire <clears throat> and sort of has those similar qualities that I look for in a musician. It's just really, it's not like his words are on top of us and we're background. Um, but he's he's responding to things and he's he's really listening to textures and responding to them and sort of weaving his voice within there. He really his voice is his instrument and um, <clears throat> it was it was an honor to, to to have him bless the project. He came in and just just killed it immediately. Yeah, I'm happy to have him. I want to be no one but me. I am a love with love loves me away. I am. She's not very bright, I'm not very bright, but she thinks I'm grand, and that's too grand with me. We may be wrong, but if we get along, what do we care say? Laughing in the sun, smiling at the sea. Right. 
also too on the project you have two dynamic vocalists again who I've profiled on the Pace Report as That's well, right. yeah. Sasha Vasandani and Gretchen Palato, and you know they bring another that duet they have on that album on your on your CD is 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 is, is out of this world. How did that come about? Uh, that's the song when an angel sheds a feather and uh that's a song that i've kind of been working on over the past five years i want to say um <clears throat> suchel and i have a, a very close musical relationship uh and great friendship outside of music so uh when i approached him about writing a song together or putting lyrics to a song that i was working on um it was very easy for me to open up to him about specifically what the story I had in mind is sort of what I want the lyrics to represent um, and he did a great job and that was you know started five years ago and then we both sort of lived some life and we came back to the tune and sort of added that second section that's that's in the middle of the song there um, and uh, so yeah it just kind of keeps evolving and uh, and you know Gretchen came in and, and did what she does which is just sound beautiful and fit the vibe and the two of them have a, a great relationship also musically and otherwise, so it's it, it was just a lot of love and and uh, it came out came out nice. I think I'm happy with it. <laughs> I saw you a couple of months ago for the record release party at Dizzy's for Terry Lynn Carrington's project Money Jungle, Provocative and Blue, and it was a reincarnation and a contemporary twist to the Duke Ellington record that he recorded with Max Roach and Charles Mingus. And first of all, I want to know how you worked well and how this came about with you terry as well as christian mcbride and two what's your take on interpreting ellington's music now in 2013 um okay so the first part uh sort of my introduction to terry lynn and christian uh, i met terry years ago in la when we were both in los angeles uh and i was a student i think at usc at the time and um, she was already out touring with Herbie and making great music, as we know she does. And uh, so we sort of kept in touch. And um, this was, I think, uh, our first chance to actually get together and 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 work together. Um, and when she called, I was I was really honored. I mean, I, I've been admired her music for a long time. Uh, and Christian, also, I've seen since I was a kid, just tearing it up, as we know he does. Um, and uh, so. The, the real challenge for me in this project, I think, was, um, yeah, trying to wrap my head around Duke Ellington and Max Roach and Charles Mingus in this really classic recording, uh, and then also um, sort of wrapping my head around Terry's writing. I mean, she came up with a whole new approach to all these tunes, this music, and then finding sort of the thread between just how everything works and just sort of personally how I process all that stuff. Um, so there was a lot of listening, and <clears throat> with with her music being as challenging as, as it was, really a lot of shedding. I was on the road at the time, and I would call friends like, man, can I get to a piano? You got a piano for me to, to shed on, because some of the stuff was really tricky. And we got to the studio, and it was really good vibes, because both of them are, are really beautiful people and, and pour their heart out, and uh, so the record turned out great. So as to interpreting Duke Ellington uh, in 2013, I think... Um, all music is is relevant to um, to interpretation. I think if you uh, approach 
anything from whatever year it is with, with honesty, with respect and integrity, uh, then there's no reason that it can't be relevant. Um, and, you know, Duke is, is obviously a, a prime, if not the most prime example of, of some music that uh, improvising musicians or just anybody who's into good music um, can, can use and, and sort of um, try to pay tribute to in their own way. So uh, it was inspiring to see Terry do it with, with such elegance and, and really just hip, hip arrangements. Um, and again, an honor to get the call. I mean, you've been busy. Yeah, there's this, this, this no pun intended. You've been very, very busy over the last two or three years. And Next Collective is another project that I, I, I just thought that, one, it's a different side of you. And two, it's not really a jazz recording in the sense of we you're in your trio, but it's more of a, a contemporary twist on some modern songs. And one of the songs you did was D'Angelo's Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of your questions earlier was the relevance of Duke Ellington. We can take that same question and say, what's the relevance of, of D'Angelo? What's the relevance of, of playing music outside of the usual, quote-unquote, jazz box? Um, but I think it's the same. There's really good music and bad music, and all those words don't really mean anything. So, and for us, you know, everybody in this collective, uh, we have a real personal relationship with the, the music that we chose with the with the tunes I mean this is stuff that we grew up with what we think about when we think about you know our first dance or whatever these kinds of things so for me that D'Angelo voodoo album was was huge you know I mean we, we all in high school just that was every day we were, were picking that apart and um, 
I sort of went through the, the whole album and, and listened to it and thought about which, which tracks I would think about arranging and I got to Africa and um, you know it's at the very end of the album but it, it's just so beautiful and in its simplicity um, melodically and harmonically and uh, I even found some other versions of, of D'Angelo just singing it solo with piano um, and sort of I thought this doesn't need over arranging. I think it's it's a, a couple harmonic uh, shifts that I added here and there, but it's really just the the beauty of that tune. Um, and for me, it, it it strikes a personal chord because, like I said, I grew up listening to that album. I don't feel bad. I mean, you know, when the first time I heard Brown Sugar, <laughs> it was like you know everyone has their swan song, and D'Angelo came out of the it. gate. That was it. Brown Sugar Bay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're just the songs on there that really you can't replicate those. That I mean, yeah. it, especially where he was personally at that time. Mm. Tell me about Next Collective. Tell me about how all of these musicians, like you and Christian Scott and Ben Williams, as a plethora of great young talent on there how did this come about uh well chris dunn the uh executive producer over at concord records um came up with the idea to put us all together i mean he signed a bunch of young cats uh to concord as sort of a new family um and we thought what why don't we get together and and do this project where we sort of introduce the the new team all at once uh so that's that's the idea that's how it started and then um, you know, all of these musicians, we, we have personal relationships as it is. Like, we, we all play in groups together in different formats. Um, so the, I, the concept was, was an easy, of course, you know, yeah, of course I'd love to do that. I'd love to play with all those cats. Um, and then when we were all in the same room actually talking about it, we really sort of talked about, you know, let's, let's really be behind this and from, from a musical standpoint. And... Um, you know, really treat this as a collective and, and be open to each other's ideas. And um, so I'm really excited to see where this grows. Um, you know, it, it's hard to book tours because everybody's got their own thing. So there's, a, you know, a few dates sort of sprinkled on the calendar right now. Um, but definitely the, the mindset of the musicians in, in the next collective is one of truly uh, a collective and trying to make the, uh, the best musical statement we can together. So it's safe to say there's going to be another one. Although, you know, we'll definitely be playing together. I think we'll be at North Sea this year if you're there. North Sea Jazz Festival, I think July 13th, 14th. So, you know, on and on, onward and upward. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at the Iridium Jazz Club as part of the Keystone Club's night here at the Iridium Jazz Club here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank the talented Sasha Vasandani, as well as Gerald Clayton for their time, as well as the staff and management here at the Iridium Jazz Club. Also, a very special shout out to Todd Barkin, who put this wonderful event together as part of the Keystone Club Nights here at the Iridium. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace.